It's time to get your news on. We are VK1 WIA. Absolutely correct. It is the WIA National News. This for week commencing March 31, 2024. In our 29th year of non-stop news. And this week, with all the latest happenings at WIA board level, Peter VK4EA, one of your elected board members. Dennis VK4AE, contest manager of the WIA John Moyle Field Day, reminds us 7th of April is the final date logs will be accepted and please use the correct logging program. But wait, there's much, much more in this edition of news from the Wireless Institute of Australia. So let's buckle up and sally forth with this week's WIA National News. I'm Editor Graham, VK4BB. Australia's ham radio news station. We are VK1 WIA. G'day, this is Peter, VK4EA, speaking on behalf of the WIA Board of Directors. We are pleased to announce registrations for the WIA AGM 2024 are now open. The WIA website has a front page item directing visitors to the AGM 2024 registration page. The Bundaberg Amateur Radio Club has done an awesome job with organising an event field weekend which starts on Saturday, 4th of May 2024. And with apologies, I can't help myself. May the 4th be with you. Check out the BARC website for the full program. A few members of the board will be attending in person and we look forward to catching up with everybody over the weekend. The board is looking for an IT manager and digital manager to help us modernise our IT platforms and increase our digital footprint. The role descriptions are in the latest AI magazine. If you think you can help us out or have any questions about the roles, please get in touch using my WA email address, vk4ea at wia.org.au. So cheers for now. This has been Peter, VK4ea, on behalf of the WIA Board of Directors. We are VK1 WIA. Now, international news with VK2 LAW Jason. Hello. This year, International Marconi Day, IMD, is on April 27. Italian inventor and electrical engineer Guglielmo Giovanni Maria Marconi, to give him his full name, was born on April 25, 1874, and is credited for inventing the radio telegraph system creating Marconi's law and sending the first wireless transmission over the open sea. IMD was created to honour Marconi and is hosted annually by the Cornish Radio Amateur Club, Golf X-Ray 4 Charlie Romeo Charlie. The purpose of the day is for amateur radio enthusiasts around the world to contact historic Marconi sites using communication techniques similar to those that he would have used. The 24-hour event will operate from 0 UTC to 23.59 UTC, but registration is required. Participants can register at Golf X-Ray 4, Charlie Romeo Charlie's registration webpage. Australia and the world, watch this space. The gongs just keep on coming. A couple of WIA National News broadcasts back, we announced how VK5 Delta Golf had been ranked in the top 50 rovers in the Gridmaster map rankings. Now further, Dave VK5 Delta Golf is now number three in the world for grids activated on MEO, i.e. Green Cube IO117. The first two place getters have done most of their operating maritime mobile. They work on ocean-going ships. VK5DGs is land only. Would seem our VK5 friend is a weapon to be aware of internationally when it comes to operating satellites portable. News from Washington, the FCC is looking into whether any security threats are being created by US mobile phones having access to satellites that are operated by adversarial foreign countries. Only access to the Galileo GNSS system in Europe has been approved However, as early as 2018, FCC Chair Jessica Rosenworcel had expressed concern that chips in the US phones make them capable of operating with other nations' global navigation satellites. Hence the agency's concern. In another move, the FCC is not playing around when it comes to selling illegal signal jammers. The agency just went public with an investigation into Amazon and other major retailers for allegedly pushing these dodgy devices that could block your mobile phone signal, GPS and more. 
typically advertised as drone deterrents or privacy tools, these nefarious gadgets are specifically designed to block radio frequencies. This has serious ramifications, cutting off cellular devices and GPS units and impacting emergency communication channels. So now maybe not your phone is blocked, but the sellers will be blocked. Jarvis Island. Remember the call, November 5, Juliet. U.S. Fish and Wildlife Services have granted a ham radio team permission to land on Jarvis Island for a 13-day de-expedition. Starting around August 1, 2024, the date may change due to weather. Six RIB stations on the island, including a 160-metre station. 160 metres will be very challenging, but the transmission antenna will be a 45-foot tall vertical without top loading. Wires can hurt birds. While this is a compromise antenna, it will be standing in salt water at most tides and should put out a decent signal. They also will have a six-metre station with a six-element Yagi. The on-island team will be augmented by 25 remote operators from Asia, Europe and North America, running CW and FT8. FT8 operations will use the Foxhound mode. Oh, and the important fact, call sign is November 5 Juliet, that is N5J. Jarvis Island was last on air way back in 1990. So good luck to George, Alpha Alpha 7 Juliet Victor, and Don November 1 Delta Golf. Permit holders for this, the Jarvis Island NWR 2024D Expedition. Does radio have more of a potty mouth than ever? That conclusion can be drawn from Chart Cipher's analysis of songs charting in 2023 on Billboard's weekly radio songs chart, ranking airplay audience impressions across all formats, showing the share of songs using some degree of profanity, jumping to a five-year high of 42%. Maybe not amateur radio, but Radio We and even a number of grandkids here has changed, and not necessarily for the better. In the past, if you released a song to radio with words, the FCC, or in our case, the ACMA, or even a soccer mum would feel uncomfortable with, you were DOA. Now that songs are designed for streaming first, the strategy could be, we're going to put in the profanity where we feel it's artistically appropriate for this song, and if it becomes big enough, we'll worry about the radio edit later. Before you think it's all the fault of hip-hop rap songs, plenty of hits from the top 40 pop acts during 2023, including Taylor Swift's Karma and Olivia Rodrigo's Vampire, also include profanity in the original versions. For VK1 WIA National News, in Sydney, I'm Jason, VK2 LAW. And now to John, VK4, JJW. Weird and wonderful. Every 26 months, Earth and Mars come tantalisingly close by virtue of their relative orbits. The closest they've been in recent memory was a mere 55.7 million kilometres, a proximity not seen in 60,000 years. This when it happened in 2003. You know, we've been paying close attention to Mars for longer than 2003. All the way back in 1924, astronomers and scientists were contemplating another close flyby from the red planet, with radio then being the hot new technology on the block. The question was raised, should we be listening for transmissions from fellows over on Mars? Flashback to 1924, a time when the cosmos was less understood but no less marvelled at. Earth and Mars were drawing near, and with that, an ambitious, albeit quaint by today's standards, attempt to probe the red planet for signs of life was set into motion. The plan was to keep out a listening ear for potential Martian radio broadcasts. So USA orchestrated a grand gesture, just on a chance... National Radio Silence Day. The idea was that terrestrial radio transmissions should be hushed as much as possible, such that any Martian transmissions might better be heard by radio operators. Citizens were urged to quiet their radio transmissions for the first five minutes of every hour. US naval stations were instructed to lend Earth's ears to the cosmos, noting and reporting any electrical phenomenon of unusual character across as wide band frequencies as possible. This was all in the hope that someone, somewhere, might hear a faint howdy or hello from a Martian. It was a moment of wide-eyed optimism. The hope was to hear a crackle from a speaker. 
some distant sound that told us somebody else was out there. The day was actually promoted as a 36-hour long period from August 21st to August 23rd. The United States Naval Observatory went as far as using a small airship to raise a radio receiver 1.8 miles into the air for better reception. Alas, with ears turned to the sky, the cosmos remained silent. Either the people on Mars were too busy to contact us, or they didn't want to make new friends. Or, as we assume today, there were simply no Martians to begin with. No Martian dispatches were received, and Earth was left to ponder the silence. From here, there and everywhere, you've tuned to the Wireless Institute of Australia's National News Service. We are VK1 WIA. Now, operational news with VK4 FUQ. Felix. Hello there. Now, contest-wise, 2024. On this weekend, the WPX contest is based on an award offered by CQ magazine for working all prefixes. Held on the last weekend of March, SSB, and May, CW, the contest draws thousands of entries from around the world. 7th of April is the final day that the John Moore loss will be accepted. This is Dennis, VK4AE, Contest Manager for the John Moyle Field Day 2024. Logs have continued to arrive. Those that already have been received seem to be fewer. The mixture is, as usual, about 50% home stations. The logs do not appear to have met with many delivery difficulties as in the past, and the direct email system seems to be working well. It is highly recommended that once you have submitted your log, you should check a bit later to see that your call sign has been added to the list of logs received. If your call is not on the list, then it is probable that it has not been received. A couple of logs have been submitted again in PDF. This is just an image and contains no more useful information to the contest than a picture of a flower. The data is not accessible electronically and hence unusable to me. In the same way, a number of logs were submitted for the VHF-UHF section using N1MM format that does not contain all the information required for the John Moyle rules and requires much extra work for the contest manager and the entrants to attempt to fix those logs. Some club stations were operated during the contest that have not yet provided a log. Perhaps in your log you have to rely on Mr. Somebody to get the log done. Get in touch and get it, give him a hand. Get it finished and submitted. Have you considered getting a senior secondary student to complete your log for you? Maybe you might inspire an interest in ham radio. It is timely to remind you all that while there is not a lot of time left to submit your logs, it will pass quickly as the final date is the 7th of April 2024. This is required by the very long lead times now for the AR magazine. Following this date, all of the logs will be processed and the results prepared and made available soon after. The results will be shown on the WI contest page as soon as they are ready. So check that your call is on the list and resend the log if it isn't. It might just be a good time to submit your log now as you never know what will happen to delay you in the next few days. Hi, AAUHF World Championship, the second full weekend of July, that is 13.14. Starts 0 hours UTC Saturday, ends 23.59 hours UTC Sunday. Trans-Tasman Lobin Contest, July 21st. The Trans-Tasman Contest, always held on the third weekend in July, aims to encourage low band activity between VK and ZL. Yoda Contest, 2024. The next two sessions of this year's Yoda Contest will be from 10 hours to 21.59 hours UTC on 21 July and 29 December on the five classic bands CW and SSB. Everyone can work everyone. August 17-18, Remembrance Day Contest. It is held on the weekend closes to the 15th of August, the date on which hostilities ceased in the southwest Pacific area. Amateurs will endeavour to contact amateurs in VK call areas, ZL and PT9 on all bands except WARC bands. Modes allowed are phone, CW and RITI as per the era remembered. Again, the 2024 contest is the 17th and 18th August. 44th Alara Contest and this Alara Contest is always held on the last four weekend of August. Eligibility. All licensed operators throughout the world are invited to participate. 
Scout and Girl Guide groups are encouraged to take part using their club's equipment and call sign. Wales work everyone. OMS work Wales only. Your results are in. Grant VK5 GR is pleased to announce the results for the 2023 Oceania DX contest. Thanks Felix and good morning all. The Oceania DX contest committee is pleased to announce that the results for the 2023 contest are now available. If you entered the contest last year, head on over to the contest website, oceaniadx.com, where you can see all of the results. It was another excellent event last year, with many records tumbling thanks to some of the best solar conditions we've seen in a long time. We received over 1,000 SSB logs and nearly 750 CW logs in the two contests from amateurs around the world. For Australian amateurs, some of the highlights included the Geelong Amateur Radio Club once again winning the Australia Club plaque, VK3GF winning the Oceania CW Newcomer plaque, VK7 Charlie winning the Florence McKenzie or Mrs Mac Award, and VK2BJ winning the Oceania CW Single Operator All Band Low Power Award. Australian stations also did well in the phone Multi 1 and Multi 2 transmitter categories, being won by VK4A and VK4KW respectively. These and more results can be seen over on the contest website, as well as photos of many of our contesters. So if these results inspire you, then start planning now. This year's contest will be held on October the 5th and 12th respectively. For the WAA News, this has been Grant, VK5GR, on behalf of the Oceania DX Contest Committee. And back to you, Felix. DX Window to the World YJ0VK a near-death confusing call sign is in operation to our east until April 11. A team of primarily VK ops are manning this Port Vila Van Aitu station. 40 through 6 metres in this, their first week, their focus will be on SSB and CW, with FT8 as a backfill mode. The second week will be CW and FT8. Charles M0 OXO is the YJ0 VK QSL manager. Global Station celebrating April 18, World Amateur Radio Day. Canada. RSC official stations will operate across Canada from 0000 hour Zulu to 2359 hour Zulu April 18, and there are some 14, and all end with the suffix RAC. Greece. The Radio Amateur Association of Greece will be using call sign SZ0WARD to mark Amateur Radio Day. They will be on air from April 15 to 30th, with the big day, of course, being April 18. No word is it as to any official Australian support for the event. Paris. Celebrate the 135th anniversary of the Eiffel Tower's formal inauguration by making contact with Michel, F8, GGZ. He is using the special call sign TM135TE until March 31. That's today, UTC time. QSL via the Bureau. For VK1WIA National News, I'm Felix VK4FUQ Inningham. From here, there and everywhere, you've tuned to the Wireless Institute of Australia's National News Service. We are VK1WIA. Now, special interest group news with Cole, VK3GTV. Hello, welcome to the Easter edition of Worldwide Special Interest Group News. First up, it's Summits on the Air, Worldwide Flora and Fauna Program, Parks on the Air and other adventure groups. Park Prefix Update. In an effort to reorganise the Parks on the Air database in a way that meets ISO standards, POTA has begun rolling out changes to the way park entities are prefixed in many countries. Australia does not seem to be impacted, but from a political perspective, the prefix change has resulted in China choosing to no longer participate in the POTA program due to the newer standard recognising Hong Kong, Macau and Taiwan as top-level entities. Beginning with the United States and Puerto Rico, parks previously coded with a K prefix will now be listed with a US prefix. For example, the Appalachian National Scenic Trail was previously K4556 and is now US4556. While the changes are largely seamless from a systems perspective, activators will be required to use the new prefixes when uploading logs. Logging software supporting POTA will also need to be adjusted. Worldwide Special Interest Group's Final Frontier. A growing number of satellite enthusiasts are currently engaged in sharing their grid square activations 
on hams.at. By visiting the website, you gain easy access to comprehensive information about the operators responsible for activating specific grid squares. Additionally, you have the ability to assess the match score between yourself and a particular rover for a given pass, while also being able to identify the upcoming satellite passes that are accessible from your location. Worldwide Special Interest Groups, IOTA, St. Vincent, IOTA NA025. J8NKI is active from Benquay Island, IOTA NA025, until April 1st on the HF bands. QSL route for J8NKI is via home call W1DED. Denmark, IOTA EU125, 5P5K, Stefan is active as 5P5K from Romo Island, IOTA EU125, until May the 6th. Activity will be on 80 to 6 metres using SSB and various digital modes. QSL 5B5K via Stefan's home call, which is dl 7 AOS. Worldwide Special Interest Groups, Radio Amateur Old Timers, and also Radio Amateur Young Timers. Hello everyone, this is Clive, VK6CSW, wishing you a very happy Easter, and reminding you that tomorrow is the first Monday of the month, time for the Radio Amateurs Old Timers Club of Australia's April Bulletin to go to air. This month, as well as the latest club news, I'll be posing the question, was Marlon Loomis the first wireless telegrapher? After which, Bill VK3BR tells us about some new medical techniques and the use of radio waves, followed by a discussion of QRM way back in 1903. Everyone, RAOTC members and non-members alike, is most welcome to listen to the program and to join in the callbacks afterwards. Full details of all transmissions, times, frequencies and modes can be found on the RAOTC website at www.raotc.org.au or just search for RAOTC broadcasts. If none of the transmission times suit you, you can download the audio file at any time from today from the club website. Once again, tune in tomorrow for the April RAOTC Bulletin. Enjoy the program, and please join in the callbacks afterwards. 7-3 from Clive, VK6CSW. Thanks, Clive. Now from the old timers to us new kids on the block. I'm Alec, VK2MV. I am wondering if any young VK hams are Daytona bound this year. On Saturday, May 18th, a special feature of 2024 ARL National Convention, known as Hamvention, will be a youth rally. The youth rally is for us students who are 11 to 21 years of age. While Hamvention offers free tickets for youth aged 12 through 18, advanced registration for the youth rally is recommended if you are lucky enough to be in the USA at the time. The youth rally registration fee is $20 and includes a t-shirt, badge, lanyard, and reusable tote bag. Youth rally participants will enjoy a full day of activities, discovery, sharing, and all filled with fun. Rally day begins with the annual Dayton Youth Forum, open to all Hamvention attendees. It will be moderated by well-known amateur radio educator Carol Perry, WB2MGP. The forum includes presentations from young hams covering a variety of amateur radio activities, topics, and technology. And a little closer to home, I will be at our own Aussie Vention at WIA AGM in Bundaberg on 4th and 5th of May. Maybe I will see you VK Yodas there too. For VK1 WIA National News, I'm Alec, VK2MV in Sydney. Now back to you, Cole. Thanks, Alec and Clive. Next up, Worldwide Special Interest Group's Rescue Radio. The Radio Society of Sri Lanka has been chosen to host the CNET 2024 convention in September. CNET, the Southeast Asia Amateur Radio Network, was created in 1964 on 20 metres to provide a means of emergency communication and to bring ham radio operators together in fellowship through daily on-air communication at 1200 UTC. Most of the amateurs participating reside in the region, but check-ins take place from around the world. CNET's first convention was held in 1971 in Malaysia. Subsequent conventions have taken place in Australia, Thailand, China, Brunei, India, Singapore and other locales throughout Southeast Asia. 
Amateur radio will again be represented at the 2024 National Hurricane Conference, which will be held this year in Orlando, Florida. The National Hurricane Conference is the USA's forum for education and professional training in hurricane and disaster preparedness. With an average of 2,500 attendees from around the country, the conference covers all major aspects of hurricane preparedness, response and recovery. Worldwide special interest groups, video, ATV, slow scan TV and other forms such as YouTube. Peter, VK3BFG is your WIA ATV representative. And if you're not watching VK1WIA National News each week, well, you should be. Bevan, VK5BD produces the video version of the news broadcast each and every week and uploads it to his YouTube channel. You can find the link on our news webpage at wia.org.au or just search YouTube for VK5BD. HamTV and the International Space Station. The HamTV system is back on the ISS. Although it's not expected that the HamTV equipment will be activated for at least a few weeks, the British Amateur Television Club has created a new wiki page which gives a lot of information on how to receive decode and display the DATV signals from the ISS. There's also a discussion channel available on the site. And that's the segment for this week. If you're travelling over Easter, please take extra care on the roads. I'm Cole, VK3GTV. It's a date, it's 2024. Remember, clubs are welcome to email text with audio for this section. Details of all WIA-affiliated clubs and societies can be found on the WIA website, including email addresses and website links. Now, we only give details as supplied by club officials. We don't take them off other websites around the place. Far too often we've found they are incorrect. But let's get down to business. And with that very special Women's Day edition for Redfest, it's to Robert. Greetings from the Redcliffe and Districts Radio Club, VK4RC. Robert Thompson, VK4TFN here. Redfest has arrived. 9am next Saturday, 6th of April, at St Michael's College, Abbey Place, Caboolture. Redfest is definitely the place to be in South East Queensland next Saturday, with 40 tables of sellers showcasing a range of pre-loved and brand new goodies for the avid ham. You won't leave disappointed. You won't have to look hard to find things like a couple of fully functional FL 2100 amps and two Yesu MP1000s operational but needing TLC. Don't forget our spotlight on the ladies this year with three, with three special focus sellers, the display for Malara and of course the cafe. Doug has the barbecue heating up already with anticipation of cooking his famous bacon and egg rolls. The Brisbane VHF group will be doing those tech talks demonstrating the all-new ICOM IC905 and explaining the mysteries of microwave propagation. There will be half-hourly lucky door prizes, minor raffle draw prizes and the major prize of the ICOM ID5100A. Tickets are only $5 available on the day. The fine food is available from 8am and the sales start at 9am. Entry is only $5. Check out the club website for more details, www.redcliffradioclub.org.au. See you Saturday the 6th of April at Redfest 2024. Thanks, Robert. Now, the WIA AGM May 4 and 5 in Bundaberg, two full days of fun and activity and lots of speakers. VK 2 and 4, Parkfest 4 and 5 of May, Bundaberg and Dorigo. VK 3, May 11, Moorabbin and District Amateur Radio Club's Hamfest. Right across VK, it's National Volunteer Week, Monday 20 to Sunday 26. VK5, the Australian Fox Hunting Championships at Mount Gambier, June 8 and 9. The Gold Coast Ham Fest happens October 31 somewhere on the Gold Coast. And in VK5, Amateur Radio Experimenters Group Radio and Electronic Sale. When? Saturday, October 26. In VK7, it's the Tasmanian Ham Conference, November 2 and 3. And in VK3, Spark Rosebud Radio Fest, November 17. Now, until next we meet... This is Graham VK4 Baker Baker wishing you all a happy, holy and safe Easter. Walk softly. From Australia, this has been the Wireless Institute of Australia with the weekly news service. 
This broadcast is in text, audio and video and is accessed on wia.org.au. Courtesy of Bevan, VK5BD's ATV and YouTube channel, this has been WIA National News. We're back now, live and local, and your voice, your callbacks. And don't forget, tick like.